eight o'clock, we can start recording and we can start reading. So, my note is saying that we have to read. From page 195, page differs, of course, the Gita and describing how we come by this knowledge. Okay? Do we have to read it or do I have to? We have to read it. Okay. So, it's a very small para. So, who is your last man? You have the text with you? Sorry, I don't have the text with me. Sorry. Okay. Then you can't read. Suki, so, you have the text? Yes, I will read. Okay, go ahead. The Gita, in yes. the Gita, Gita in describing how we combine this knowledge says that we get first initiation into it from the men of knowledge who, who have seen, not those who know merely by the intellect, its essential truth, but the actuality of it comes from within ourselves. The man who is perfected by yoga finds it finds it of himself in the self by the course of time. It grows within him, that is to say, and he grows into it as he goes on increasing in desirelessness, in equality, in devotion to the divine. It is only through the supreme knowledge that this can altogether be said, that this, this can altogether, altogether be said, the knowledge which is, the knowledge which the intellect of man amasses is gathered laboriously by the sense by the senses and the reason from outside. To get the to get this other knowledge, self-existent, intuitive, self-experiencing, self-revealing, we must have conquered and controlled. We must have conquered and controlled our mind and senses, samyat then dendria, so that we are we are no longer subject to their delusions but rather the mind and senses become its pure mirror. We must have fixed our whole conscious being on the truth of the on the truth of that same, on the truth of that supreme reality in which all exists, that paraha, so that it may display in us its luminous self existence. Yeah. Small para. So he has already told us that when you get knowledge, okay, and knowledge means the spiritual knowledge, not the ordinary knowledge, then you get equality. Okay, your equality becomes perfect. It's also the other way around. The more equality you cultivate, you will go towards knowledge. Okay? It's really divine. Okay? And now the Gita is saying, how do we get that knowledge? Knowledge is giving. Uh, equality, but how do we get the knowledge? So there is a description. Of course, there is one thing that is not mentioned here, but that is Param Drishtva. Once you see the Supreme, then the, all problems disappear. Because now you know what is what. You have seen the Supreme Truth. Okay? But here it is slightly different. Okay? The Gita in describing how we come by this knowledge says that we get first initiation from into it from the men of knowledge who have seen, seen is in, in, in uh, italics, the stress. Okay? So those who have seen the Supreme, okay? not only experience, but seen the Supreme. They, for them, they give you the knowledge and you get mental knowledge at the beginning. The knowledge that you get is mental. All of us are reading the Gita now and if we absorb what the Gita is saying, or rather what Srinva is saying, then we get mental knowledge, okay? And then we practice. And when you go on practicing, okay, then slowly, slowly, you get the actuality. That's what he's saying, and that's the next uh, sentence. <laughs> we get it from the men of knowledge who have seen, not those who know merely by the intellect. It's essential truth. But the actuality of it comes from Within ourselves, the more you grow within yourself, the knowledge comes. <clears throat> the man who is perfected in yoga, the man who is perfected by yoga, finds it of himself in the self by the course of time. This is the 
chapter 4, verse 38. Okay, so it goes like this. Nahi jnane rasudrisham pavitramiya vidyate. Tat swayam yoga samsiddhi kalena atmani vidyate. It means nahi jnane rasudrisham pavitram here vidyate. Nothing is more um, purificatory than knowledge. That's what the Gita is saying. That swayam, and how do you get it? By itself, that swayam, yoga samsiddhi, the success, the siddhi, comes by in time. Kalena, atmani. Kalena, atmani, within yourself. You find it. That's what he said. Okay, so he has quoted, and I quoted you the Gita the verse. Then it says, it grows within him. That is to say, and he grows into it. Okay? As he grows on increasing, as he goes on increasing in desirelessness, in equality, in devotion to the divine. So first of all, you have to fight your desires. The less desires you manage to get, the more nearer you get to knowledge. Okay? And then, devotion also is important. Devotion is a very powerful tool and that also helps you to go to the divine and get the knowledge. It is only for the supreme knowledge that this can ultimately be said. The knowledge is the intellect of man, am I saying, is gathered laboriously by the senses and the reason from outside. So, the knowledge that you are getting through the senses and the intellect is a lower knowledge. <laughs> It's not the higher knowledge, it's the lower knowledge. So, the higher knowledge is the spiritual knowledge, which you go, which you get by, not by using senses and mind, but by going inside. When your senses are all directed outwards, so scientific knowledge, knowledge of the world, comes by using senses which are going outwards. And then you analyze and Examine the data given by the mind. That is the scientific knowledge. But the spiritual knowledge is you don't use your senses. You go inwards. You concentrate inwards. Okay? And then you get the spiritual knowledge. So we are very clear about that. It is only the supreme knowledge that this can altogether be said. Not the upper avidya, the lower knowledge. The knowledge is the intellect of man amasses, okay? This is amassing, collecting information. It's information, it's not really knowledge. It's gathered laboriously by the senses and the reason from outside. Okay? Spiritual knowledge comes from inside and without senses and without reason. To get this other knowledge, which is self-existent, not amassed, okay? In the one case, you are amassing knowledge. In the other case, it is there, self-existent, and when you come in contact with it, it expresses itself in you fully. It is intuitive, self, self-experiencing, self-revealing. It reveals itself to you. We must have conquered and controlled the mind and senses. Samyatendriya. Samyam, Samya, having controlled Atendriya. Atendriya, without any Losing attention. Atendra, unsleeping. Okay. You have to go on very, very diligently and attentively concentrating on the divine, then you can get that knowledge. So that we are no longer subject to the, the delusions. What are the delusions? Seeing the physical world, objects, and thinking that they are real. They are not real, and they are also only appearances. Okay? But rather, the mind and senses become its pure mirror. Okay? The truth is reflected in the pure mind and you, the mind and the senses. When you start, when the mind becomes pure and silent, the senses also start seeing the real and not the unreal. The unreal are all the objects in the physical world. We must have fixed our whole conscious being 
on the truth of the supreme reality in which all exists that para in which all exists the self in the self that everything exists in the self so that it may display in us its luminous self existence okay so how to get knowledge was approach a jnani second grow in desirelessness and then third he will tell you now have faith okay one by one he is telling us how to get the knowledge so we read the next one finally we must have faith so somebody is read uh iran can you read yes sir no okay go ahead finally we must have faith Finally, we must have a faith which no intellectual doubt can be allowed to disturb. Shraddhavan labate dhyanam. The ignorant who has not faith, the soul of doubt, go to prediction. Neither this world nor the supreme world, nor any happiness, is for the soul full of doubts. In fact, it is true that without faith, nothing decisive can be achieved, either in this world or for possession of the world above. and that is only by laying hold of some sure basis and positive support that man can attain any measure of terrestrial or celestial success and satisfaction and happiness the merely skeptical mind loses itself in the void but still in the lower knowledge doubt and skepticism have their temporary uses in the higher they are stumbling blocks for for there the whole secret is not the balancing of truth and error but a constantly progressing realization of revealed truth <clears throat> in intellectual knowledge there is always a mixture of falsehood or incompleteness which has which has to be got rid of by subjecting the truth itself to skeptical inquiry but in the higher knowledge falsehood cannot enter and that which intellect contributes by attaching itself to this or that option or that opinion cannot be got rid or by mere questioning but will fall away of itself by persistence in realization whatever incompleteness there is in the knowledge attained it must be got rid of not by questioning in its root what has already been realized realized but by proceeding to further and more complete realization through a deeper higher and wider living in the spirit and what is not yet realized must be prepared for by faith not by skeptical questioning because this truth is one which the intellect cannot give and which is indeed often quite opposed to the ideas in which the re- reasoning and logical mind gets entangled it is not a truth which has to be proved but a truth which has to be lived inwardly a greater reality into which we have to grow finally it is in itself a self existent truth and would be self evident if it were not for a sorceries of the ignorance in which we live the doubts the perplexities which prevent us from accepting and following it arise from that ignorance from the sense believed opinion perplexed heart and mind living as they do in a lower and phenomenal truth and therefore questioning the higher realities adnyanam adnyana sambhutam rut uh, rutsam sam 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 samsyam they have to be cut away by the sword of knowledge says the gita by the knowledge that realizes by resorting constantly to yoga that is by leaving out the union with the supreme whose truth being known all is known y- yasmin vidnyate sarvam vidnyatam yasmin vidyate sarvam vidyatam big para but big one okay about a page so let's see what he says so now he is concentrating on the faith shraddha okay that is very important shraddha and There is a lot of discussion about whether it is blind or not. Necessarily, it is true. 
Because when you say blind, you must use your mind. But mind is not a very powerful thing. Okay? It's full of errors and doubts and all. It is faith that really takes you to the goal. I'm reading each sentence. <clears throat> Finally, we must have a faith which no intellectual doubt can be allowed to disturb. Sadhavan Labate Jnanam. Once you have the faith, okay, then you have you will get jnana. The jnana will come by itself. The ignorant who have not faith, the soul of doubt goes to perdition. Perdition is actually um, uh, in a way it is uh, because it's a bit loose way of saying, but perdition means going to hell, to okay, destruction. Okay, so the one who has no faith, the soul of doubt goes to perdition. Let's see. Fourth chapter, 40th verse. So, Shraddhavan Labate Jnanam Tat Paraha Samyate Indriya. So, one who has got Jnanam, uh, Shraddhavan, and who is Samyate Indriya. He is absolutely controlled and unslipping control. Jnanam Labdha Param Shantim Achirena Adhigachati. He gets knowledge quite fast after that. Okay. Jnanam Labdha Param Shantim. Having got the knowledge, then he gets a supreme peace. He gets very quickly. Not quickly. So that's what he means. Sir. The ignorant who has not faith, the soul of doubt goes to perdition. So he is translating in a very uh, interesting way, soul of doubt. So he must, the soul of doubt means the doubt that is there in the mind and the being, okay, they can't go very far. Okay, you destroy yourself. In the letters, Srivanda says, doubt has no particular cause. Doubt exists by itself. In a letter to Dilip Kumar Roy, he writes that doubt doesn't have any reason to exist. It exists by itself. And then he says to Dilip Kumar Roy, what doubts are you talking about? There are such small doubts. I had gigantic doubts. <laughs> he said, okay. So, one of the big doubts that he had was whether the overmind is the final or the absolute. Then he realized when he had the overmind experience, he knew that supermind is even above that. Okay. So, the doubt is very, it's very corrosive. It destroys the soul. Because there are two types of doubts. One is a doubt which is positive. And the other is a doubt which is negative. The negative doubt is one that says, no, I don't believe, without understanding, without questioning. Okay? You say, uh, you say, ignorant and very um, uh, uh, stupid way of saying things without examining. That's the doubt. But there's another doubt which is positive. You are not sure and you have an open mind and you try to know more and more. Okay? That is good because that is the one that inquires. Inquiry is starts from certain doubt. But doubt is not that corrosive doubt. It's a doubt that wants to know more. Okay? So there are two types of doubts. I go to the next sentence. In fact, it is true that without faith, nothing decisive can be achieved either in this world or for possession of the world above, and that it is only by laying hold of some sure basis and positive support that man can attain any measure of terrestrial or celestial success and satisfaction and happiness. Okay? The merely skeptical mind loses itself in the void. So, I'll tell you that faith is so necessary, even in science, okay? We have the famous example of two scientists and one inventor. The one who invented, he was the one who invented so many things. Huh? Edison, Edison, I think, is the one who invented so many things. And he went on trying to, uh, when electricity was discovered, he tried to create a bulb. Okay? 
which revolutionized uh, the whole world. He failed 250 times, but he never gave up because he had the faith that he will succeed. So that is one case. And the other one is Pierre and Marie Curie, the ones who discovered the laws of radiation. Okay? They discovered radium, which emits light by itself, radiation. And they went on trying for four years continuously before they had success. When we were children, we saw the film in the playground. Okay? Madame and Pierre Curie. Madame and Pierre Curie and her, uh, her his, uh, his wife. Okay? So even for terrestrial success, you need faith. That's what he said. And we know also very well that faith is also the famous quotation in the nursing home. Finally, it is faith that cures. They have tried so many experiments, placebo experiments, where the faith itself cures you. Okay. That famous experiment with the placebo, everybody knows about it. Two sets of people, 10, 10. One was given the right medicine and the other was not given the right medicine at all, nothing, just plain water. And they were told that there is a medicine. Many of them from the second group recover because they had faith. Okay. So faith so clearly is necessary for terrestrial success or celestial success, heavenly success, either in the physical world or also in the spiritual world. It reminds me of a very interesting case. We had a man called Manu Bhai and he was, when we were children, okay, uh, about six, seven years old, he used to be there as a teacher. Okay? So mother told him something very interesting. He said that whatever field you decide, okay, you will get success. It was very interesting. So finally he went into business. Okay? He started manufacturing switches in Pondicherry. Okay? Uh, Albert Bhai's brother, Manu Bhai. Okay? And he succeeded. He business succeeded very well. So mother told him that. Very interesting. She said that whatever field you take, you will succeed. <laughs> so he chose the other field first. Maybe next life he will choose the other one. Okay. So, anyway, faith is what makes you successful. Terrestrial or celestial success and satisfaction and happiness. The merely skeptical mind loses itself in the void. Now, <clears throat> but still, in the lower knowledge, doubt and skepticism have their temporary uses. So, this doubt is one that I was speaking about in a positive sense, not in a negative sense. <clears throat> when you are told something or you come to a conclusion which you doubt, you know, it doesn't sound right. There must be something more. So, that's a doubt which is positive. It pushes you towards more detailed knowledge. Okay. But still, in the lower knowledge, lower knowledge, scientific knowledge, knowledge of the world, doubt and skepticism have their temporary uses. In the higher, that is in spiritual life, they are stumbling blocks. Okay. So, for there, the whole secret is not the balancing of truth and error, but a constantly Progressing realization of divine truth. So, in the spiritual world, the truth goes on from a lesser truth to a higher truth with faith. But in the spiritual world, uh, sorry, in the worldly um, field, doubt is useful because they go from it is a mixture of falsehood and truth in all physical things. Okay. You remember the dualities. If there is a truth, there is an equal and opposite untruth. Okay. So that's why there is a mixture always of the dualities. So necessarily you must have doubt, which is positive, not negative. In the higher, there are stumbling blocks. And this is what many people don't understand, those who are rationalists. They say that your faith is blind. Okay, it may be blind, but it is a much more powerful thing than the rationality. One question arises, if faith is blind, 
Suppose some ignorant people have faith in a, in a in something which is not uh, reasonable, something irrational. What about happens then? So that faith in you itself will correct me and take you to the right. Faith is very important. Faith must not be mixed up with superstition. Superstition is not faith. Faith is a feeling from the soul. Superstition is something very, very shallow. It is something that belongs to the mind also. And that also is a very low level of mind, the physical mind. For Can I, I mean, ask a question, please? Yes, yes, go ahead. You know, recently you read about what happened in the north about this Bhole Baba. How lakhs of people had faith when yeah. to attend his lecture. This yeah. man is not a real guru, he is a false guru. Yeah. But it was their faith which took them there. Yeah. And then there was a stampede and 166 people died. Yes. So how do you explain that? That's what I'm telling you. I just now told you there is difference between superstition and faith. Faith has to come from this soul. These people are all just, you know, they hear say, some people say, he's a fantastic man, and this and that, and then they all do this. This has happened many times in India. Okay? Even the, uh, there are many people who go to tantrics and all. Okay, This is superstition. It's not faith. Okay? So this, is, this is exactly, it has to be a, a faith from the soul. That is not going to be superstition and something wrong. Earlier also it has happened. In India it's very common. You go to a tantric and you say all sorts of nonsensical things and you follow. There was a very interesting case in Delhi where they were following a tantric and that tantric told them all of you will get liberation if you commit suicide. Okay? About 10 years ago this case was there in Delhi. Okay? And they <coughs> One day, they found that there was no sound coming from that flat. So all those who were living in the complex, they went and they opened the door and they saw that the whole family had committed suicide. And later on, they came to know that they were advised by a, 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 either a false guru or a tantric that you will get liberation if you get rid of your body. So there has to be discrimination also. That positive doubt should be there. And Faith is for those who are already developed, but those who are not developed, it is not faith. It is superstition. They just go by hearsay and something shadow. That is not faith. Uh, uh, Rangata, one yeah. question. How do, we, how do we know that the faith is from the soul and not from the mind or, or from other uh, parts of the being? Yeah, it's a good question, but again, the same thing. There's a gradation. You come to know by experience. Okay? You come to know by experience. I know of one case in Pondicherry where one lady, a foreigner, she went to a guru and that guru exploited her. So obviously the person was not yet ready. Okay? But if you are ready and on the threshold of a spiritual life and you have faith, you are bound to succeed. Okay? It happens. There is an interesting uh, question whether you are always led to the right guru. Okay? But if you are, um, each thing comes by experience. So even when you are led to a wrong guru, if you want, okay, then you get the experience and you grow by experience. In the beginning, you certainly don't know if you are yes. Exactly faith. like Niruddha came to Sherbindo, but he had so many doubts. But yes, he grew, he was first. Not very, uh, you know, doubtful himself said. And then he was the most, you know, um, uh, person who could say that, no, uh, Shurinder's yoga was the right thing and all. You know, he that completely changed. So it was changed by experience or by proximity to Shurinder or what? In Niruddha's case, it was certainly a faith. A faith inside himself. Okay. Yes. Always, yeah. Because uh, in one case, Shurinder says, uh, Nirod is no doctor to me. Okay? He says, Nirod is no doctor to me. He has come here to serve me. 
‫שהם נפגשים על זה. ‫אני נפגשים על זה, ‫ויש לילים יהודים. ‫אבל לוקח את צ'מפקלל. ‫צ'מפקלל, הוא קם, ‫והוא פשוט בא דאון לשרלו, ‫והוא בא דאון לזה, ‫שאשנן קרנה מידי. ‫והוא היה שם חצי שעה. ‫הוא לא יכול להגיד. ‫והוא אמר, ‫אני רוצה להשאיר את הקלוז. Yes, but let me just say something. So these are the two uh, absolutely opposite people who finally had faith, and I mean, Jambalalji had faith from the from before, and Nirodha turned his yeah. uh, the whole being towards. Yes. So that is only with experience that the faith grows. That's right. If at all, if you have doubt. Yes. There are also interesting cases in spiritual history also, Jagai and Madai, for Chaitanya. They were yes. actually, they even injured him. They were drunk and they injured him, but later on they turned around. Same thing with St. Paul or St. Peter, I've forgotten. Okay. He was also, he, had a, he was against Christ and he had a, a vision of Christ coming to him and saying, why do thou persecute us me? And he became the rock on which Christ was able to build his system. Okay. So Peter, he was obviously Peter. Saint Peter, yes. Yeah, Saint Peter. He was walking on the way to Damascus when he had this vision of Christ. Who asked him, why do thou persecute us me? Brother, that's Saint yes. Paul. Is it Saint Paul? Yes, that's the Damascus thing, Saint Paul. Yes. And the rock, the rock yes. upon which the, the church is built, that's the Peter. Ah, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> So, thank you, Sunti, for correcting me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this doubt and this uh, thing is sh shallow, superficial. But faith comes from the soul. And as Pallavi said, in the beginning we don't know. But later on you get confirmation. It comes by experience. Okay? It depends at which level you are. And in the beginning, you need experience to have the Development now ready for his spiritual life. Yes, and the experience comes when you are a little more developed. No, so yes. how does it depend on us? You have a soul, no? and the soul is guiding you. And that's in the beginning, it is guiding you without your knowledge. Okay? But it is guiding you. <laughs> so you are led to, it's a very long journey. And in the beginning, you don't know. So the journey is exactly like that. You don't know in the beginning and slowly, slowly, slowly so many lives, you come to know. That is the ignorance. And when you get rid of your ignorance and get the knowledge, then your faith is justified. Okay? So in the, beginning we have, in the beginning we have blind faith and after the experience it's not called blind. That's right. You can say that. That's right. Because here, there is a certain feeling in the heart that I know it is. The reason will tell you very clearly. And that is exactly why in uh, the mother, Sri says very clearly, follow your heart and not your mind that leaps at appearances. It is faith that takes you. The reason is very, very shallow compared to your psychic being. It is. So, don't follow your mind. And that's what happens with superstition all this. This case of this uh, Hathras uh, thing, very clear. Earlier also there have been many cases like that. People are shallow. They have religious feeling in India that anyone who has got some semblance of uh, power, spiritual power, they won't uh, all of them crowd and go to them. It's happened earlier also. There was a famous case of uh, that uh, in Gujarat. What was his name, that man? Finally, he's in jail now. I forget the name. Asaram. Ah, Asaram. Asaram. That's right, Asaram. <laughs> that was one case in Gujarat. Then there, there, are, there, are, there are many, many Rangada. Huh? Rajneesh also. There are many, like. At present, Bhageshwar Baba. Ah. You must have heard in YouTube his film. Yeah, Bhageshwar Baba. 
so many names. Uh, locally, there are some. Some uh, get national fame. Some get international fame. Yeah, that's right. Tamil Nadu also. Yes, he has gone abroad now. <laughs> <laughs> So these are things, and the ignorant are attracted to these things because those who are already developed in lower viveka, those who have discrimination, they will not be led so easily to such things. There will be something in them which will tell them that they know the right uh, thing. The, the vibrations also will tell you that this is not the right thing when you are developed. But when you are not developed, this type of phenomena happens. It's not uncommon in India. It's very common. It doesn't happen in the West because they are, they base themselves on reason. Whereas in India, it is the spirituality which is common, which is misinterpreted by the ignorant. That's what happens in the West. There is no spirituality as such. It's only limited to very very small uh, pockets of monasteries and things like that. Things are changing now, but it is different. In India, it is very common to have religion, and it can very much be misinterpreted. What about Sadguru? Sadguru's experience is real, but he is limited. He says that there is no God. No? He did go to this. It looks like from his utterings, we can say that he had a genuine experience because. It, First experience was also very interesting. I don't know if you know about it, but the first experience was he was sitting on the hills in Mysore, and because he had an appointment and there was half an hour, so he sat on the hill for some time. He said, "When it is time, I'll go for my appointment." But then he entered into this cosmic consciousness, and when he awoke, he thought only 15 minutes had passed, but actually four or five hours had already passed. Okay, so. That was the first experience. Second time, he was along with many others in the house in the family, and then he went into a trance. And when he woke up, he thought that it was only half an hour, but actually it was thirteen days. He was in that uh, condition. Okay, and uh, a crowd had collected to see him. They said, "What is this man? He is." Uh, Uh, gone inside and not waking up. He's not dead, but for thirteen days he's just sitting in that chair. And when he woke up, he thought it was only half an hour. <laughs> we, we have gone into the timeless. So, and the words he uses are not at all corresponding to some of those words. But behind the words, if you listen very carefully, you will see that he's speaking of the same things, but in a very different language. So he had some experience. But it was very limited, very limited, and that's the reason why this, when he goes abroad, all the intellectuals gather around him. It's the other way around with that Ananda Maima, okay? Not Ananda Maima, sorry, Amrita Ananda Maima in Kerala. Okay? She came to Pondicherry also, and some of the archives people went to her. But when you hug her. You really get emotional. Okay, that's what I was told. People start crying in the West. Huge crowds gather to see her, and when she embraces them, she is known as a hugging mother. <laughs> she hugs you. Okay, and there is tremendous psychological effect on those who, and they uh, absolutely turn to her. Okay? And then uh, she also speaks things in very simple language. But which are always based on truth. She never speaks something which is not the right one. Okay, like that Osho, for instance. Osho speaks nonsense sometimes. You remember Osho? What was his name? I forget. Puna. Okay. Yes. Yes. Rajnish. 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 That's right. Rajnish. Correct. <laughs> so immediately you know that he is talking nonsense. Okay. Uh, Rangata, but his earlier writings are very different from his later writings. The ah. first two or three collections of his uh, lectures That's right. seems to show that he had some experiences. Yes. But later, once he got the power and the money and all that, that's a different thing. I don't know. But uh, 
uh, like two books which of which the earlier collections of his lectures are very very different yeah. you, it doesn't you can't believe that it is actually his writing the I'm first one is titled sadhna but he explained that he had an experience but the ego you know remember sremdu speaks of the ego even if it's spiritual instrumental ego so that was there in him and he went absolutely berserk he was thrown out of america he went to america and settled there and they were doing all sorts of things which was not at all in conformity with their laws and so they were thrown out after that he came to pune okay so there are so many different cases that <laughs> so he was a very interesting case <laughs> okay so now the time wait for the we have to stop here we'll finish it next time okay so interesting question of faith <laughs>